So let me, if I may, just broaden the lens a little bit first to the university world. You've been in the university world for a very long time uh, in Los Angeles and certainly read around the world. Uh, the university environment today, and in particular around free speech, is fraught. Uh, geopolitics is extremely complicated and highly sensitive, and perhaps more than ever, at least in my view, very personal to members of university communities as opposed to some of the other events in the world that were sort of more out there or over there. Yeah. And I'm wondering, is there some way to use your work on influence to improve the quality of conversations, to improve open-mindedness, to improve just uh, the confidence within large complex university communities that we can all have these difficult conversations and must have these difficult conversations without them kind of going overboard or without indeed members of the community, students or staff, sort of stepping back in fear? Yes, so I'm gonna suggest two things. One is the research is quite clear that if we actively and truly listen to a communicator on the other side and truly accept their information, that doesn't mean we accept the argument, but we accept the information and we think about it and even point out something uh, that they that they've said that's they that we agree with we get significantly more conversion to our point of view when we then take our turn in the process if we if we become the communicator we have to show them that we are open to their ideas that we don't reject them out of hand, that we're sympathetic to the situation that they described and we listen to it carefully. And the reason that it's typically been described for that is that, oh, well, then they like us more. They see us as more open-minded and they, they have a more positive view of us. I think that's probably true, but what we're forgetting is something even more elemental. After we've done that, it's their turn. The rule of reciprocity says now it's their turn and they open their minds and consider what we have to say in a even handed way without an automatic rejection. So that's one thing we have to take the initiative in being willing instead of just pushing people away and not letting them speak, mm -hmm. right? Pushing, listening and then in an open-minded way, and then having a discussion with them about, okay, and then they will do the same. The other is to, uh, on that same topic, the people who uh, in these fraught political times don't want to be exposed to the messages of others that they might find offen offensive or uh, or, or uh, in some way objectionable. It's a big mistake in terms of influence, uh, persuasion, because we have, to, I'll say this, I'll, I'll, I'll give you my conclusion and then explain it. Counter arguments are stronger than arguments. The research literature is very, literature is very clear. If we don't learn how to counter argue, and if we don't give ourselves the chance to counter argue, we are fools of the influence process. We have to allow in the university for people to learn and practice the out, art of counter arguing, even if they find it uh, objectionable in, in some way or another what the other person, they have to be able to understand it and counter it in order to win the day. Yeah. Well, I think that, I mean, that's fascinating because basically what you're saying is to take reciprocity and to put it in one of the most complicated, fraught situations today, but indeed one where there is, at least in my view, a responsibility to uphold this kind of difficult conversation. That's the point of an academic institution. That's how we define academic freedom. So I, I think that's, it's fascinating to hear you uh, apply. You know, we are on the same page. You know,